Hello, I'm Doug Lair, Associate Executive Director for the American Association for Respiratory Care. So why is it that the AARC developed a research protocol for heated, humidified, high-flow nasal cannula therapy that I'm just simply going to refer to as HHHFNC for the rest of the video? But the answer is simple. We're encouraging our members to engage in research with this technology. But why? Well, the answer to that question takes us back about 18 months ago in which we were uh, fielding uh, solicitations from our members specific to HHHFNC with questions about was it really safe and did it affect uh, clinical outcomes for its patients. So it was our goal to perform a systematic review of the evidence with the intention of creating a clinical practice guideline, a white paper, or even a best practice document that was built on a foundation of strong clinical evidence in which we can make recommendations to respiratory therapists in managing patients receiving this therapy. Now what we found in our view is interesting. First and foremost, primarily it is a safe therapy and for the most part it does prov provide improved clinical outcomes. But what we also found is that the strength of the evidence was lacking and primarily it's because there was a lack of robust information to validate our preliminary findings. So how do we increase the strength of that evidence? Well, you increase the strength of the evidence by increasing the amount of research that's being conducted with the therapy. And that's where you come into play. If your institution fosters an environment of research and you deliver this therapy to your patients, we would encourage you to consider in doing so. Now, the beauty of this document is that it removes the heavy lifting from your lab. And we understand that the vast majority of our members are either novice researchers or lack research experience altogether. And it's not because you don't want to, it's just that maybe you don't know where to get started. You don't know how to ask the question or develop a hypothesis, how to create a study design. And we've done that for you with this document. Now this document was vetted by an independent third party IRB that provided commentary for us to strengthen the document for you. The beauty of this is that we've created the hypothesis, we've created the study design, and we've even looked at measurable outcomes that you want to look at and consider when conducting this research. The beauty of it is that it's 100% customizable for your institution. You can take it back and if your IRB wants you to tweak it or make some minor modifications, you can easily do that. And you can tailor it to the needs of your department, your institution, but most importantly, your patient population. So we would actively encourage you that if you conduct HHHFNC in your institution, that you, can, that you consider research with it, that you use this document to make your life with research a little bit easier. As I said, you can use all of it, you can use none of it, or you can use some of it. And what, that's what we're going to find that most people will likely do. But just conducting the research is not going to be enough. At the end of the day, what we're hopeful is that you conduct your research and you take your findings and you submit it to AARC Congress for presentation at the AARC Open Forum. And then subsequently, submit it as a manuscript for the Respiratory Care Journal. Because at that point in time, we will have an increase in evidence that we're hoping will likely increase the strength of it and provide that uh, document for you that you're looking for to help guide you in delivering this therapy to your patients. Thank you so much for your time and good luck in your research.